The purpose of this meeting is to do three things. One is to give you an update on the overall activity of the foundation in as far as it relates to yourselves in your respective campuses, particularly Gauteng uh, campuses. And to outline some of the challenges and obstacles that we've encountered along the way and the measures we've put in place to go beyond those challenges. Two is to al outline the line of march on how we are going to move forward to safeguard both the brand of Tusanani Foundation as an activist movement and to safeguard the sustainability of the actions of this, of, of this movement. Three, given that I'm actually going to the UK tonight where I'm pursuing my studies, I'm going to then introduce you to people who will reply to your WhatsApp messages on time and your SMSs and your emails. First, I'm going to give you an outline of what actually is Tusanani Foundation. You see, we haven't had an opportunity to actually introduce the whole foundation and, and its objectives and its methodology to you because we were more interested in getting you to sign your buzzer agreements first so that you are safely secured on campus and then we can deal with the rest later. It's, a, it's actually how we do things here. We need to get you inside first, we will deal with the rest later. Why? Because higher education opportunities in South Africa are much more available to those who are inside the system than those who are old outside of the system in the first place. Which means our priority should be in getting inside and then we deal with the rest from the inside. So everyone who is here and is inside the institution, but there's still a challenge you are facing, just know we are going to deal with it. Why? Because you are part of the system. I'm here today because there was a meeting uh, for the Sanani Foundation. Um, Maurice was like telling us about the renewal of, of the contracts and everything and how everything has been. I always tell you guys, as to Sanani Foundation, we are not doing you a favor. You are supposed to be here. But when you are here, do not lose your level of consciousness. Do not forget why and how you got here. Because that will define your conduct here. You can't now start behaving like someone who's paying for themselves. You don't sign your, your buzzer agreement on time. And we must follow you and you change your numbers, your email. We must then chase you around so that you sign that thing because if you don't sign the damn thing, we go to jail. Remember, we promised that we will pay this university. But some of you, I can see there's a tendency that emerges or that is emerging which needs to be clipped immediately. This is a movement. It's not some NGO. This is not aid. We are not giving anybody aid here. It's a political program to reverse a political problem which dates back to hundreds of years. And you have to behave as such yourself. So, one more time I have to chase somebody to sign a damn document. We are going to have a serious problem. Because it would mean that you were not listening to me today. Or the city has done enough damage for you to lose touch of with where you are coming from. Because it has that capacity. I, I, I knew about Tusanan when Maurice got into my school. He went there to motivate us, to help us to choose careers when we get into higher institution. And he got us application forms and he told us that he will find us passaries after we've done our matrix. Yeah, that's how I got to know Tusanan Foundation. I've got people that we lost last year because they didn't sign the document. I know there are administrative glitches when you're dealing with institutions, whether it's government or private sector, that I'm willing to entertain. If you come to me and say, the Department of Higher Education called me and said, you've got, there's an affidavit missing or your documents are not certified, and I emailed them the same documents certified and they acknowledge receipt or receiving those documents. 
That's a different case altogether. To say you missed their call, or they called you and you didn't hear what they were asking for. Do you understand that that affidavit is worth 160,000 rand? So what would you do? This is the, that's what we mean when we say we must start to deal with the mind here. What would you do for 160,000 rand in today's, in, in, in today, in, in South Africa today to be more precise? Some people work 365 days for 160 rands. And you can take a document to Pretoria for 160,000 rand. Why does that even happen in someone's mindset? It's because you have lost touch with the reality that we are dealing with here. And why, that's probably why it's important for us to constantly remind you to not lose touch with the struggles of working class students. Because that's very important. It would be very sad for me to see some of you go home because of these administrative glitches. We, will, we, we can easily deal with them. But can you harass us? Can you harass the department if they have they've not responded to your email? Can you, do, can you behave like you want this thing to happen? The most challenge I experienced, it was last year on my first year, at the beginning of the year, like, the, to adapt in the lecture hall, because the lecture, the pace he was lecturing, it was too fast, and the English he was using, it was too deep, considering that I'm from the rural Eastern Cape, so it's hard to adapt to those situations. I'm about to leave in a few hours, but I thought I must meet you guys and remind you that actually, this is not how it's supposed to be. Many of you get so comfortable in these universities, having three meals a day, you start to believe in your mind that actually I was supposed to be here anyway. You need to cut that shit. The issue is that the city has potential to normalize abnormal conduct. I'm not sure if you understand. The city has the ability to normalize abnormal conduct. I was telling vet students here they lost in our last meeting that at vets today, as a result of this bone-free project, or depoliticization of young people in South Africa. You've got people adverse today who cannot afford to be adverse and still do not believe in the idea of free education. There is someone who is being kicked out of vets because they can't afford, but they also don't believe in a free vets. They don't believe in a university of fit partners friend that is free to go to, but they can't afford to be at that same vets themselves. That's what we call political instability or political disability. You have to be disabled politically in your political posture for you to say, I can't afford this bread, but I also won't take it for free. What kind of moron is that? It's because we are told and made to feel that we are not good enough. But that's the, not sad, the sad part. The sad part is that we believe them. Uh, I would like to thank Tisal Foundation for coming through well I needed them the most by funding my, 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 my academy uh, because I had a challenge with NEFSAS when they came, is, came back to me and said they can't uh, fund me because of insufficient fund. So I would like to thank them and I hope this will stop okay to me but it will continue to other students and also give you a special thanks to Mr. Mkobe who when I needed help he amended himself and he acted positively. Thank you. Um, I remember when I passed my metric back in 2013 and I had applied so many bursaries and like Mr. Masuta none of them gave me a response. So I was stranded and my parents were always pushing me that they thought oh, it, it's easy to get a bursary and <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a crazy friend over there. <laughs> 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 so, so I finished my
my metric and none of my bursaries had responded. So I was very lucky when I got a call from Mr. Masuda. I don't know if it was himself or one of the volunteers. And they called me and they said they, um, they can offer me a bursary. So um, I came to the University of Pretoria and uh, with my marks, the university said it's going to pay some of my fees. And then my parents sat down with me and they told me, and they said, you know what, the truth is, um, we don't know how we are going to pay for you. Probably when you graduate, you are going to be drowning in loans, trying to pay off loans. So um, I said, oh, okay, that's okay. So I, I still um, try to get bursaries in my 2014 year because um, this bursary said it was going to pay for um, registration. So I remember, oh, I don't have any criticism for this foundation. I just have really great gratitude and appreciation because they have so much patience with students like me. So I was, um, I was thinking that, okay, this bursary is only paying for uh, the registration fee. So I need to get a full bursary that can pay for everything. So I was taking long when they said they wanted um, certain documents. I, I kept ignoring it and stuff. So until the due date, I remember coming back um, from class one day and I got an email from Masuta saying, um, you have how many how many time, how much time left to submit certain documents. And I still had to call my parents and they still had to um, scan their documents over to me. It was kind of like really stressful at the time, but then I did it. I'm grateful I did it because because at the end of the year, the bursary said it's offering me a full bursary. So then I started to take it seriously. Okay, this, this, <laughs> <laughs> this can actually help me. So that I don't drown in loans when I finish when I finish with my degree. I think academic excellence means uh, being a top achiever and putting all the hard work uh, that is needed to like um, be good at what you're doing or what you're studying. Yes. So while we're in the city, we must always bear in mind that we came here alone. You don't come here and say us from uh, Alwa North. And uh, Anel. Don't come and say us from Stack Sprite, we're here to apply. Although we put in your applications collectively as to Sanani volunteers, they accept you individually. And therefore, while studying needs a collective effort, it's still an individual responsibility. We're together. And therefore, you guys must must never lose touch with, with, with that reality. I'm Tsepeng Litwisa. I'm studying retail business management at the University of Johannesburg. My name is Emmanuel Mohoe. I'm studying LLP at Vets University. My name is Rufuno Mango, and I'm studying become Accounting in the University of Johannesburg and I'm currently doing my second year. My name is Anele, my surname is Leita. I'm studying at the University of Johannesburg. I'm studying become in HR. My name is Wamamo Bendaba. From KZN, I'm studying Bachelor of Clinical and Medical Practice here at Vets University, and I'm doing my second year. I'm doing this program I'm doing mainly because I'm interested in medicine, but I also saw the need for healthcare workers where I come from. So I realized that if I go to this field, I can make a difference in my own. December last year, I had some experience clinically that I went back home. I went to our community health centre where I work and uh, I realised that I can do some change because I was helping people like even in June they were busy asking when am I coming to help them. Some of them are even living up a real doctor. <laughs> Right now, uh, some of you, you know, see me at the campus because also in time I'm based at the hospital. Currently, I'm in Boxman delivering babies. <laughs> <laughs>
I want to wish you well as the year remains. Uh, wish you well in your personal lives, <laughs> if you have any. <laughs> uh, wish you well on uh, when you go home uh, during the holidays. If, you know, please be safe. And just know that South Africa is a much bigger task for you than to work for some consulting company in center. Uh, that's not what we're trying to produce here at all, actually. Uh, none of you will ever be unemployed. That would be like treason to have a Tusanani graduate who's unemployed. It, it cannot happen. It will never happen. So focus on passing. The rest we will take care for you. And if you've got your marks, uh, your marks will, of course, pay your fees, as you know. That's what happens here. Uh, and on that note, let me check. I think in London it's... Uh... <laughs> We're just one hour ahead, uh, but I know, depend, I'm not sure whether the clock there runs anti or <laughs> however the case may be. Uh, let me go there and try get this PhD. When I come back, I'm sure we can grow this movement to something better. Thank you very much.